morning, church. My name is Dana Beth. Uh, my husband and I, Ted, head up the growth track here at RWC. And we want to welcome our guests this morning, as well as those that are viewing online. And of course, a big thank you to our regular attendees that are um, always faithful here to RWC. Um, I think that J Pastor Jason and Pastor Chris and Ben, they did an outstanding job setting us up for this series. Um, the, the, this series is actually based on our growth track, Follow, Connect, and Discover. And it's important to know that um, we've got to do all three of those things first before we get to today, which is to, to discuss uh, serve. It is our desire as leadership in this church that everyone connect with RWC and that they understand who we are as a church community. So we are a church for the unchurched. We have a real passion for those who do not know Jesus. We have a very clear vision here, and Pastor Chris already spoke on this, but our vision here is to love, grow, serve. And our mission here is very simple. Each one, reach one. We want everybody to take personal accountability in fulfilling the mission of the church and reaching out to those who don't know Jesus. You've heard this in previous weeks, but um, the growth track is really based on a prayer that Paul spoke to the church of Ephesus. In Ephesians 1, we learn, I ask the God of our master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing him personally. Your eyes focused and clear so that you can see exactly what he is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Endless energy, boundless strength. So just to uh, review a little bit the previous three ser sermons we heard. In week one, Pastor Chris talked about knowing Jesus intimately and building a relationship with him personally. We know that in order to be followers of Christ, that we have to do four things. We've got to realize that there is a separation between us and Christ. We've got to believe that Jesus died for our sin. We've got to accept that Jesus' gift and the work that he did on the cross was free and sufficient. And we've got to invite Jesus to be Lord of our life. In the second week, you heard Pastor Jason talking about connection and that we need each other to keep our eyes focused and clear. And it's so important that we build a church family and that we c connect with one another. Um, one of the, the primary ways that we do this is through our Sunday morning worship experience. Scripture tells us that church should be a place of celebration inspiration, preparation, and salvation. We need each other to fulfill that connection piece. The third step in our growth track is to discover, and Ben Hanneman spoke to this two weeks ago. God has plans for each of us, and he has identified a very unique and special gift in each one of us, and it's so critically important that we discover what that gift is so that we can serve him and figure out what he's calling us to do. When you do that, you will find true fulfillment personally, professionally, and really in all facets of your life when you discover what that gift is. And then finally, today, our last step in the growth track is to serve. And we want to serve so that we can walk in the glorious way of life that he has for his followers. So today we'll conclude that. Um, before we do, on the next slide, I do just want to point out that each of these four steps in our growth track are very much dependent on one another. So you're going to have a really tough time connecting to a local church or local church body if you've not identified yourself as a follower of Christ. Likewise, you're going to have a, a hard time discovering what your gift is or maybe maybe even no desire to discover what your gift is if you have not connected to a local church. And then finally, you are not going to be able to serve in true fulfillment 
if you've not discovered your gifts, connected to a church, and identified as a follower of Christ. So with that, we'll go ahead and um, open up in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to bring your word today. Please give me the confidence to do your work and give you this message and in a way and deliver it in a way that is pleasing to you. Thank you for waking us up in this great nation of America that we can freely serve you, dear Lord. Thank you for the opportunity and the ability to come to church and say we are no longer a slave to you and I am a child of God. Thank you so much. Please help you bless and protect each one of us represented here today. Those that are viewing online, God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. So quick story on the next slide about how I really discovered my purpose. Um, about a year ago, um, Jordan, and I don't know his last name, but he was our intern, and he was delivering the word one Sunday. And I was sitting there in the back pew back there, and kind of something that I had struggled with for quite some time is, what is my purpose in life? Why did God place me here? What legacy am I going to leave for my children? Why, essentially, why am I here? And I don't know how Jordan said this or exactly the words he used, but the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I know exactly what I heard, and I heard, you exist to serve the Lord, and I heard it exactly like that, as profound as that, as simple as that, but that's how I heard it, and ever since then, it really became my mission, it became crystal clear why I was here, and I think for some of us, you might be struggling with that same concept, you know, why did God put you on this earth? Some people know, some people know that they were born to play baseball professionally, or be a singer, or, um, you know, be a teacher, or coach a lawyer, a doctor, but I didn't know why I was here, and it took almost 40 years to figure it out, but now I do know. I know I exist, <laughs> I exist to serve the Lord, and ever since then, it's really become my mission to serve Him in everything that I do and say, and yes, I fail at that daily, but um, at least the picture's a little clearer now, and I do believe that it is everybody's true purpose in life to serve the Lord and we are as a church it's our desire that everybody here at Radford Worship Center find a place to serve God that aligns with your spiritual gifts that Ben talked about if you are not serving in a way that is aligned with your gifts you're not going to find fulfillment in that just like if you work at a job and you don't necessarily enjoy what you're doing or you work for you know, somebody that you don't enjoy working for, if you're not passionate about that job, you're not going to find fulfillment in that. So if you're serving in this church in a way that's not aligned with your gifts, you are not going to do it with a grateful heart. In Corinthians um, 1, we learn it says, in fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. You've got to realize that your gift is unique and important, and there is no small places to serve in this church. Ben spoke, ben spoke to this two weeks ago. He used the pinky toe example, and he said, your little toe, talk about the importance of the little toe. And, you know, if we didn't have it, it, it sure would make a, lo a, lot dif a lot different and difficult. This body of Christ is just like that example. It takes everybody's gifts working collectively to function efficiently and effectively and do the work that is God that God has called us to do. Next slide. Um, once you discover your gift, you are mandated in the Bible to use that gift and not waste it. Um, one of the things, this is another quick story, um, but when I was in college, I went to Longwood College in Farmville, and I was pledging a business fraternity, professional co-ed business, business fraternity, and during that pledging experience, they taught us, um, one of the things that they said was, you're going to get out of this organization what you put into it, and I have carried that with me my entire life because it applies to everything that you do. You can fill in the blank. You're going to get out of this church and this ministry what you put into it. You're going to get out of your profession, your job, your career, what you put into it. You're going to get out of your marriage and your relationship with your kids what you put into it. So it is so important that we don't have to surrender to the calling of Jesus, of the calling of God. If you half surrender to him, he's going to half bless you. He's going to half use you. So we've got to fully surrender to him. 
the same thing holds true in this faith walk. We don't need spectators. We want participants and players. We don't want to be a consumer. We want to be a contributor to this church and this mission. And if you choose to dive in head first with your relationship with the, with the Lord, you are going to reap the rewards of that service. So, guys, you can fill in this blank. You're going to get out of this ministry and this church, your relationship with Jesus, what you put into it. When you are using your gifts to serve the Lord, you're going to find personal fulfillment in that. But you're also going to be helping fulfill the mission and vision of this church. Our collective gifts produce more fruit. So quite simply, what we can accomplish together as a church is going to be more than, we can, than I can single-handedly accomplish. We're going to reach more people as a church body. So we know that every person here that this morning can really make a difference by serving. And John 15 says, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Guys, we're mandated to be servants to the Lord. Jesus himself was a servant. And, and quite honestly, it is the least that we can do for what he's done for us is to give back to him in this way. So the next slide, you should see a picture of, um, this is the Radford Rec softball team. We're both of my daughters there in the front row in the middle. And then my husband, Ted, was the assistant coach. And what's significant about this photo is the words that came out of my then eight-year-old's mouth at the beginning of the season, the one holding the bat. She says, Mom, I want to be Dad's star player, and I want to make Daddy proud. So that really stuck with me, because the truth is most of us, no matter how old we get, want to please our parents. And then if you've got parents, one or more, that have passed, you hope that they pass proud of you. So it got me thinking about this sermon today. Why, why don't we strive to please our Heavenly Father in the same way that pl we please try to please our earthly father? So it, it, we know that it's pleasing to God when we serve him. We know that he wants us to serve him. So... In order to serve God, though, we've, we've got to serve other people. But if we know it's pleasing to him, how come we don't try to be that good and faithful servant and please him like we do our earthly fathers? So for the next few minutes, we're going to give you some practical application to provide you with some next steps on how you're going to connect to a, um, this church and really serve others and make a difference. As a follow, and these are your fill in the blanks. As a follower of Jesus, I make a difference when I connect with new people. We must always, always remember that people matter to God, so they matter to us. In Romans 15, verse 7, therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. The good news, guys, is that once you've discovered your spiritual gift, we make it really easy to welcome other people and connect here at RWC. We make it easy to build relationships that are meaningful and lasting. The fact is that the people that are serving in this church are doing more than just executing a task. And I think on the next slide it will demonstrate this. Look at the logo up here. You see a very familiar logo, Chick-fil-A. As much as I like their waffle fries, it is not about the waffle fries. Or is it about the chicken sandwich? I've never been to Chick-fil-A where they didn't have a line wrapped around the drive through and a dining room full of people. But quite honestly, guys, it's not about the chicken sandwich. It's about the experience and the emotional connection that they have provided to their patrons. So they have a consistent product, a quality product. They're courteous. They've got associates that are well-mannered, well-trained. Um, they provide a great experience for the children and the playgrounds, the little cute placemats, the balloons. They refill your drinks in the dining room. A hand sanitizer. As Christians, they're closed on Sundays, so we like that. And this was the kicker this week, Wednesday. My husband was out of town, and I took my kids through the drive-thru in Christiansburg. 
and they said, happy National drive through Day, and gave me three free coupons for some breakfast sandwiches. So guys, Chick-fil-A knows, knows how to do this, but it's not about the chicken sandwich. It's about this connection that they've provided. This church does the same thing. These teams are here to provide a connection to the people that walk through the doors, and we need everybody's commitment and help in order to, to do that and to provide that experience for them. So we have so many teams here on Sunday morning and throughout the week. One of them is the connections team. They actually serve all the way from the parking lot to the double doors, and they're doing more than just welcoming people. They are putting people at ease and being allowing them to open their hearts to be receptive of the Holy Spirit. The hospitality team, they're doing more than just giving out coffee and donuts, right? They're at, it's about making people feel at home and bringing the comforts of home into this church. The bridge team's more about more than just meeting people. It's about breaking barriers and giving others a sense of acceptance. The altar team, for example, they're not just up here praying for people. They're providing hope and encouragement along the way. The tech arts team, they're doing more than just sound and our PowerPoints and um, live streams. They're actually bringing relevance to this church in a very technology-driven culture. The worship team, it's more than just a great concert. We've really got some great musicians, and we're blessed with great vocals. But they're about not just about the music, guys. It's about glorifying the Most High and worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. Our children's ministry, near and dear to my heart, but it's more than child care. It's more than babysitting. It's training children in the way that they should go so that they don't depart from it. It's planting incorruptible seed into their hearts. Um, our opportunities, guys, to serve don't end on Sundays. Wednesday nights, you've got Children's Ministry, Forge and Forge JV, bringing relevant ministry to the children in the New River Valley. It's been a church for thousands of teenagers who had no place to go. They had no church. C groups for adults, they're more than um, just fellowship groups. They're a place where people connect and form bonds, have each other's backs, pray for each other. They do life together and they grow. So the teams that serve in this church provide more than just the task at hand. They are actually providing a, an emotional connection, and we can't pull it off without them. And you know what? We're producing a lot of fruit as a result. Your second fill in the blank is build relationships with my team. As a follower of Jesus, I make a difference when I build relationships with my team. When we build relationships with people we serve with, walls begin to break down and real change happens as a result. Our teams are the first line of pastoral care. We've got members praying for each other and stepping up when we need them. Each team is a smaller family in the context of a greater body, and we build unity. We learn about team unity and building relationships in Philippians 1. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy, for you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. So Paul recognized the importance of partnering with others. We, learn, we can learn from that, that building relationships with others is vital so that a greater work can be done. I borrowed this from my job, but one of the things that we say at Kroger is how we work together is as important as what gets done. And that is so true for this ministry as well. How we work together is as important as what gets done. Your third fill in the blank is, as a follower of Jesus, I make a difference when I empower others. Empowering others makes them stronger and gives each person a sense of ownership. They have something personally at stake then when we empower them. Will they make mistakes? Absolutely. They're going to fail us every time, probably. <laughs> but that's how we develop leaders. We need to remember that we are people working together for a purpose. And when people understand that purpose or the why, you know, why we exist, we're going to be more efficient and engaged in our work, and then the progress is going to be more sustained. 
when it talks about um, empowering or supporting scripture, we find in Colossians, um, it says, Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Spiritual maturity will never come without empowerment. That is a key piece in this growth track. And finally, our last fill in the blank is celebrate the wins. As a follower of Jesus, I make a difference when I celebrate the wins. In Luke, it says, in the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. Guys, the wins for us, you see, is not a run scored or a contract signed or a passing exam. The wins for us as a church is every salvation, every baptism, every child dedication, every newest member of this leadership team, every answered prayer, every life changed, every guest that walks through these doors, every miracle, every person healed, it's all these things you see on the screen. These are the wins for this church, and when you serve in the church, you can take part in celebration of those wins. When people respond to the gospel, every person and every team from the parking lot to the front doors to up here on the stage to behind the scenes in the food ministry, everybody can celebrate those wins because you took part in that process. And together, we're producing more fruit. If I could invite the worship team back up as we bring this to a close. So guys, as a follower of Jesus, I make a difference when I connect with new people, build relationships with my team, empower others, celebrate the wins. When you make the decision to serve, you become a leader in this church, and there is a huge responsibility in that. You represent something bigger. And as we wrap this series up on the growth track, we need your help. It's going to happen on September 15th. We are moving to three services. And as a result, we need more leaders in this church. We need purpose-driven leaders that focus their efforts on uplifting experiences, reaching the lost. And we need leaders that share in the, the vision and mission of the church. So if you are not currently serving in the church, I would ask that you pray about this that you pray that God will give you the confidence and the courage and the boldness to lean in and discover your spiritual gifts and ask God to hold you accountable to do his work so that you can connect and engage in this body of Christ. As you're sitting there, you might be in the same boat that I was a year ago wondering why the heck am I here? Why? What is my purpose? I want you to consider for a moment that your purpose is simply to serve the Lord. Like, that's my purpose. It's to simply serve the Lord. And I don't have a you know, profound tweet or anything today, but this last slide. Um, and then I'll follow Joyce Myers' ministry, but it's from Joyce Myers. I like what she had to say. It says, God has planted greatness in you. Let today be the beginning of a great adventure as you step into the gifts he's given you. Guys, you are mandated to use your gift that he's given you. And we want to give you an opportunity to do that. Um, at each of your seats, you've got to sign up for the dream team. We make it very easy. If, there's a, if you're interested in any of this, pray about it. Check the box. Get involved in this ministry. Because I can say from personal experience, it has been the, one of the most fulfilling things that I've done in my life get involved in this build a church family and reach people so you too can have part in that if you've identified yourself as a follower of Christ and you've started to develop relationships in this church and build connections and you've discovered your gifts and you're ready to serve talk to somebody in a blue polo or fill out this and refer this to us so that we can get you connected into this church I appreciate your time attention today and I'm going to call on Pastor Jason back up here for a moment. Y'all give Dana a hand.